What up, it's Guru Jojo, and in this particular video, I'm going to be speaking about beauty, the spiritual meaning behind beauty, um, the metaphysics of beauty, perhaps. So basically, beauty is something that um, is pretty much argued already by many people in terms of it being something that is a standard, um, you know, that we've created as a society and there's also proof that beauty is in the eye of the beholder so we know that both is true right and the reason why i'm going to be speaking about this topic in particular is because everybody wants to be beautiful in some way and i feel like i actually really feel like everyone is beautiful they just have to find the um access towards their beauty and that comes from within first so you have to be able to dive into your um deeper self and by tuning in with your deeper self you'd be able to pretty much reflect and send out a particular aura that would influence the way that people would perceive you and we want this influence to be gravitated towards what beauty approval in some way right boom cool so we know that there is a standard of beauty generally speaking people find proportion to be beautiful so as long as somebody is expressing proportion in some sort of way this is considered to be beauty so that's the reason why balance is beautiful this is the reason why um libra the zodiac sign of libra is considered to be um you know the sign of approval and and whatnot um because it it's actually an expression of beauty it's actually saying that something is balanced enough to be approved okay we also know two proportions are definitely significant because you know in math equations you have this plus this and it equals that and so the left side of the equation is balancing out with the right side of the equation and this is what creates some sort of equalization so then we know that you know this is considered to be beautiful at least since ancient times today things are different there's things like extreme beauty that i feel like in modern society that um we have gravitated towards and by this i mean that having maybe extreme features is now becoming more appealing to people not everyone there's still um a good amount of people who still consider proportion to be beautiful but there's also a growing community of people who consider extreme features to be beautiful okay this is the reason why you have people going out for surgeries and getting like their hips done and you know females hips are way bigger than the rest of their body or females thighs are way bigger than the rest of their body um even to like some people be looking like bobbleheads and stuff like and it's some it's it's attractive now extreme beauty in my opinion is beneficial for high fashion modeling and stuff like that like people like that extreme stuff you know if you watch america's next top model and whatnot normally the people on there in my opinion this is just my personal opinion sometimes they look kind of weird but for some reason it works right because extreme beauty is considered to be um a different type of beauty it's 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 good for fashion high fashion and stuff like that uh, i mean high fashion model whatever you know what i'm saying so we know that okay now i gave two different types of beauty there's proportional beauty and then there's extreme featuring beauty so people who have extreme feature features maybe their eyes are really far apart maybe their eyes are really close together maybe they have really bushy eyebrows maybe they have really long hair maybe they have no hair like this is what i mean by extreme beauty the proportion types of beauty pretty much reflects um, or supports the fact that there is a standard for beauty then when you get to extreme beauty this shows that beauty is what in the eyes of the beholder okay so with that being said we know that um you know 
to me, that's the main two different conflicts of beauty. When you go to the proportion side, um, highly proportioned people are considered to be, you know, beautiful in a standard way. Um, this is the reason why they took like, you know, what people consider like really attractive people, like movie stars and stuff like Brad Pitt, Holly Berry, um, um, Angelina Jolie, um, I'm not good with names and stuff, to be completely honest. I'm terrible with that. Other people just, like, say people's names. They just know, like, I'm not good with that stuff. But, you know, they took those people and they said that they measured their, like, facial features and how far apart things are. And it's like, they have almost, like, these perfect ratios, apparently, which means that they're very proportionate. And this is the reason why people would find them to be very attractive. What's behind this proportion is health. So, in general... When you have good health, there's a strong possibility that you may reflect really beautiful, really proportioned features. And these proportioned features are what created the standard of beauty. And then again, what I told you is that in the situation or the circumstance in which beauty is in the eyes of the beholder, this would be extreme beauty. Like your features may be more extreme rather than proportioned, which is another way that people find people to be beautiful but this more so is um it's that type of beauty is more subjective like not every ma not everyone will agree upon somebody being beautiful based upon those um unproportioned features so now with that being said i want to explain how to access your own personal beauty in other words i'm saying how to influence others into perceiving you as a more physically appealing person. This could be um, pretty, beautiful, gorgeous, or like handsome for men, um, good looking, well put together, okay? So obviously, first of all, you have to kind of, you know, work on yourself. So you, you should be kind of like updated probably with like fashion and whatnot. Like, see me like, if I get my nails done, I probably would be more appealing right now. You know what I'm saying? But I don't have my nails done. But I'm just I'm just saying. <laughs> like, it's just those little things help. You know what I'm saying? But in general, if you really have trouble, like, with your looks or whatever, or just trouble with your own sense of beauty, because I'm telling you this right now, like, everyone is beautiful in some kind of way. Um, you just have to really find that inner like identify with yourself and then radiate that energy out now i'm going to explain this through very simple methods like you don't even need a lot of tools to access this information okay the first way i'm going to explain it is through life path numbers okay your life path number you just need literally your date of birth the full date of birth including the year and you can get your life path number okay i'm going to go through life path one through nine and then 11 is gonna correspond with life path number two. So two and 11 are pretty much the same. 11 is the more extreme form of two, life path two. Um, if you want, you can do six and 33. Um, and then we also have um, the two, um, my bad, the 22, the four and the 22 is also gonna be the same, so boom. So if you're a life path number one, you express your most beauty actually when you are more natural so the more that you stay i wouldn't say like be extremely natural because people that are like wearing you know accessories or makeup or something like that they may shit on you but um i'm just saying like as soon as you go overboard with like makeup and accessories or even like maybe things like um overly broadcasting your financial um successes or something like that um this is going to gravitate you outside of that natural inner beauty life path number one they radiate their most beauty through being natural and independent in some way so your ability to express um to to wear like even like um more so name brand clothing probably wouldn't be so good. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's what I mean by natural because when you go to Life Path 2, 
these people for some reason when they wear makeup when they're over accessor when they wear a little bit more accessories um maybe name brand clothing for some reason this may trigger a reminder of their beauty instead it's almost like the attention could get shifted towards their beauty but with the late path number one if they accessorize too much people will um gravitate more towards the accessory rather than yourself so that's why i'm saying people will notice your um true beauty through your ability to just be a little bit more natural in some way so again too much makeup is gonna throw people off a little bit but there's nothing wrong with wearing like if you're a female there's nothing wrong with wearing a little bit of makeup for a male it's best if the male um you know maybe not accessorize too much like maybe not wear like a bunch of like too many hats or something like that and even if it, the guy's like into makeup or something like that it's probably best if the guy doesn't put on too much makeup like eyeliner or something like that if a guy's into that um there's nothing wrong with like keeping up with your looks like getting a haircut and stuff like that but i'm just saying like as soon as you start to overdo things even for a male like maybe wearing too much clothing like maybe in the winter like you're wearing like a scarf and and like stuff like it may kind of come off wrong in some way like um but at the same time i don't want to i don't want people to think like if you're a life path number one they're like oh god forbid i'm a guy and i wear a scarf i'm gonna look ugly like no it's not that it's like if you're wearing a scarf and you have like a louis vuitton bag that you're carrying and you have sunglasses on and you have grills on it's like it's that's gonna throw people off they're gonna pay more attention to your accessories rather than you and even too if you're hanging around too many people you're gonna notice that the people are gonna be more gravitated towards whoever you're hanging around so if you take a picture with a bunch of people that's gonna give a reminder to pay attention to the other people now going to life path number two you're ability to show off your true ability your ability to show off your true beauty is going to be in your ability to show off other things because it's actually going to oppose that and it's going to gravitate the attention maybe more towards you for some reason when you accessorize it it brings out your features it brings out your beauty um even people too like life path number twos if they take a picture with another person, there's a strong possibility that that other person is going to send a reminder of your beauty instead in some way. And I'm not going to say it's going to completely throw the attention off the other person, but it helps to give a reminder of almost like the beauty that you two may have in common or something like that. And then that automatically makes you look better. So anything that you add to yourself is going to add to your true beauty if you're a life path number two. All right, life path three. Similar to Life Path 2, you look better when you're involved with something else. But with Life Path 3, it's the utilization of something. So you look most appealing, or at least you send off a reminder of your beauty out to others. People will look at you in a more beautiful manner when you are creative. So things like poetry, okay? things like playing an instrument, like playing a guitar or something like that for some reason, it will gravitate people towards perceiving you in a more appealing, a more attractive um, light in some way. Um, staying within some sort of creative energy, keeping busy with something, wanting to learn something new, um, expressing curiosity and youthfulness in some way. Um, as soon as Life Path 3, though, starts to, like, you know, indulge in substances like drugs and alcohol, which may age them in some way, this is going to do the opposite. So it's important to stay, like, purely curious in some way. Like, your curiosities are more pure. Like I said, like, playing an instrument or something like that, um, creatively expressing yourself in front of people or just communicating in some way, poetry. All that stuff is going to send off a reminder of you being handsome or you being beautiful in some way. Life path number four, a lot of times what 
reminds people of your physical beauty is in your ability to actually be nurturing or professional in some way. So your ability to maybe dress professionally in some way. Um, simplicity is important too with Life Path 4, similar to Life Path 1, but they don't have to be so independent in it. Whereas like I said, Life Path 1, they take a picture with another person or something like that, there's a strong possibility that the attention may get shifted into the in too much into the direction um, opposite of them. Life path four, this shouldn't really be an issue. Um, instead, just showing like that you're like a family person in some way um, and that you're connected to the home, taking care of the home, it's gonna just, for some reason, it's just gonna come off attractive um, to others in some way. Um, as soon as you show that you're like a distant home person or like you're not very motherly or something like that, even as a male, just like not showing um, nurturance and care in some way, not um, showing cleanliness in some way, um, not showing that you care for others in some way, this is going to gravitate people to see you kind of in a less attractive way. Um, also with like path number four, just being able to kind of take a leadership role is going to give you a little bit of sex appeal. Like people are going to find it a little bit sexy in some way, most likely, like your ability to manage something. Um, also too, for life path four, this um, also could be life path 22. Just 22 may be more extreme. Like this may be like, like people that are into business or something like that, or, um, so showing like that leadership and that care with in their business, like they really care for others or something like that. Um, but in general, life path number four, just showing that you're like professionally responsible and stuff like that and showing that you're not too um, extravagant and adventurous um, and kind of staying put in a sense, that's what people are gonna find attractive in life path four um, and possibly 22. Um, with 22 is going to be more extreme though. So it just may be like, you're not a person that's so like shifty, like the number three, they could like play guitar today. And then a month later, for some reason, they could just start painting. And like, for some reason, people will find it like cute or something like that. But Life Path 4, they start jumping all over the place like that. Like people are not going to really find that as attractive. Um, you know, um... So just that like stability. Life path number five. You're most attractive when you express some sort of unconventional energy, like being different, not really following the stream so much. Um, being confident in your ability to express uniqueness in some way. Um, you know, maybe just going against the grain a little bit in some way. That's gonna show that you are attractive. Um, I would say any sort of law, like following the law in some sort of um, rebellion. So like, you know, being a rebel, but not like going too extreme with it to the point that you get locked up or something like that is probably not the best idea. But just being able to show that like you're different and that you may, you know, choose to do things differently in some way. This is going to um, help, you know, people to see you in a more appealing way. Um, maybe showing that you're not so, I don't wanna say showing that you're not so stable because at the end of the day, in my opinion, a lack of stability is not always the most appealing. But let's say that like you are an artist or something like that and you have a life path number five, expressing like maybe a little bit of craziness or rebellion in your art would be very appealing to others. but. Maybe not like that as a, in your real lifestyle type of thing, um, like your real life. Also with life path number five, your ability to assert yourself in a unique way and maybe just in a way that is going in a different direction than where you see the general public going in in some way and your ability to kind of take leadership in that, your ability to stay more detached maybe from um things like neediness um and be responsible in a rebellious way this is what helps to strengthen your aura 
in a way in which people will see you in a appealing way like they will see you as beautiful or handsome basically more beautiful or more handsome in some way life path number six your ability to basically just be balanced in some way like to be clean cut in some way so you know clothes not too out there or too extreme or too unique just like wearing like regular clothes like like i imagine shopping at I don't know, Macy's, JC Penney or something like that, Target. Like just your ability to just be regular, to be honest, is the way that people find you to be appealing. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be natural, but it just your ability to just kind of stick with the mainstream is where people will find you more appealing. So, you know, Life Path Six is gonna appeal more to that standard definition of beauty more so than the extreme. Your ability to um, care for others in some way, maybe like nurture others and stay, you know, stay up with work, keep up with work situations and um, help others. People are going to find that attractive. So just like your ability to um, kind of work hard, okay, show that you're like a work ethic type of person. Um, and also to show maybe that you're crafty in some way, possibly. Um, that's more so life path number three. But life path number six could probably um, push out an influence of beauty from partaking in that type of activity. And also to, you know, just your ability to live a regular life for life path six. Like just to be a regular person in some way. Um, not too extreme that's what people are going to find attractive as soon as you start to get a little bit extreme and stuff no 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 you're kind of coming off of your life path there um, and not that people won't find you attractive but that's not going to be your natural like your inner strongest expression of beauty instead it's almost like you're going to be reflecting maybe the beauty from something you're interested in or something like that um so this would be like work this would be like you know when you're coming out of your natural self this is where you're kind of going backwards because you're expressing some something else that somebody has already portrayed in some way um which is nothing wrong with that but it's just not going to really show your your most beauty so that's mainly what life path six just living like a everyday routine kind of life and you know being modern keeping up with the modern energy that's going on around you and definitely having a job for life path six um if you're in, like jobless that's gonna be like really unattractive for life path six so life path seven you show your most attractiveness and your ability to be confident on your own in some way and your ability to be knowledgeable and carry a lot of um, information like people are going to find you most attractive when they feel that they can come to you for some sort of resource so for life path seven all right i have to do i'm doing seven eight and nine over because um there's just audio disruptions from background noise and stuff so if you notice that stuff looks different that's why so life path number seven right comes off more physically attractive when they're able to express their differences from particular groups so this is similar to life path number five except life path number seven generally can be a little bit more responsible in the in their approach um and the ability to come up a little bit more shy in their rebellion so they're not like so out there with it but they still have a confidence about them as it relates to their ability to be different from others their ability to be resourceful in information um or just resourceful in general in some kind of way um a different type of resource so something something that's like not like what everyone else is doing or something like that also to life path number seven generally speaking comes off more attractive 
in their ability to share what they have or what they know with others in some way. Um, because life path number seven, generally speaking, they spend a lot of time to the self gaining insight and knowledge. So they're usually quite scientific people. Like they could be abundant in the area of like science and like just knowing this, knowing how things work in some way, even like mathematics, like various of stuff like related to science. And, um, they come off mysterious because of it with that so that's what makes them attractive because they could be kind of shy even though they know a lot of stuff and it's like for some reason that energy that they could be holding back a little bit can be kind of like attractive for some reason with like perhaps seven in particular um and also to you know having some sort of spiritual lifestyle you may find this attractive in others but this also makes you appear to be uh, more physically attractive just naturally being um in some kind of way just naturally um being in to like spirituality metaphysics or something like that like something to do with spirituality rather than like traditional organized religion like path eight traditional organized religion could be more attractive um or just at least being <clears throat> or just at least being more spiritually um being like more, so life path number eight, as long as you kind of appear to be in control of things like possessions, owning a home, owning a car, owning kids, like it sounds weird, but it's just like the vibration, like it's just, don't think of it in any kind of way, just like seeing that you have responsibilities and ownership over certain things comes off attractive. Now I'm not saying oh, I'm a life path eight, let me go and knock somebody up, have some kids, and I'm going to be more physically attracted, start glowing. Nah, that's not the point. It's like, just, you know, for some reason, you get extra attraction points if you did happen to have kids or something like that. Even though kids get older and they start to do their own thing, it's like you still have, like, control over that, like, that sense of having in some way. Um, you know, like I said, just having ownership over stuff, I guess it shows a different level of responsibility. Um, similar to Life Path 4, just being like mature in some way shows attractiveness. Um, Life Path 8, showing possession is showing a sense of like maturity and like that somebody can count on you. So you're going to naturally attract people who need that energy. And that possession energy comes off attracting. Now, I'm not saying be overly possessive of others or overly possessive of your material or your resources or whatever it is. But for some reason, people find it attractive. They find it attractive that you possess stuff in some way. Okay? So, Life Path 9, right? Basically, their ability to be humble and um, the ability to appear to similar to 7 similar to life path seven to know a lot but not be so loud and extra with it to kind of have that sense of knowing nothing that sense of people can count on you this sense of having good judgment and having um just the energy that you would expect a person that people look up to to behave like and you know whatever energy is expected of that that's what makes you attracted to others um, being spontaneous can come off attractive for life path 9 being scattered just like 3 can be attractive just like life path 9 um, but it's like still being able to hold it and keep things together um, having a lot of wisdom and knowledge and also having a spiritual lifestyle in some kind of way people will find life path 9 more attractive if they tune into those type of behaviors and interests um, you know, showing more than just looks with Life Path 9, definitely not being overly um, flashy, but you know, more attention should be put on other things rather than flashiness is my point. Like flashiness won't be too much um, paid attention to. Um, don't be mistaken by the bright flash in the background. I'm a Life Path 9, but in general, like, I feel like 
people find Life Path 9 most attractive when they're just able to just be themselves and be humble. Because generally speaking, people can see that you know a lot, that you can do a lot, and your ability to kind of like be humble in that in some way um, and not like be too like look at me look at me look what I'm doing um, you know in everything and all the time this is how people like will have respect for you and therefore you will come off a little bit more attractive in the fact that you show that you're multi-talented that you can do a lot of things that you have experience in these things but you're not trying to act like you're the best person, like, you know? Um, and that you're humble with your, your accomplishments and stuff like that. Um, that energy should come out in a more inner strength way. So the way that you express yourself. So in general for Life Path 9, showing your more soulful, showing your more spiritual side is going to help your beauty radiates out. Um, it's going to give you a good aura and people will find you to be more physically attractive as well. Um, you know, meditation, anything to do with spirituality um, and expressing soulfulness in some way. Um, that's how people find you attractive and appealing in some way. So thank you for watching this video. If you like it, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Peace out.